Yeah, I have my time still. Now, this is the part that I like. Yes, we are taking selfies. So, if you have your phone, because our speaker table is over here in and self land. Try it. And so, if you guys can take a picture and post it on your page, hashtag FPW Dallas or Fellowship of Professional Women, you can find us on Instagram and on Twitter, Facebook. But we would love to hear and see your smile, hear from you and, and see your smiling voices. And so we'll go ahead and get started here. And before I introduce uh, Tanti and Dana. Before I introduce Tanti and Dana, just to let you know about Fellowship of Professional Women. We have just celebrated 25 years of ministry. And for those of you, know, 25 is a big deal on Indian. During the pandemic, and we went live on Zoom and we came back in person in September. And we are so excited that we will continue the work that was started 25 years ago. That we are a non denominational organization. And we, uh, for those who don't know Jesus, that we can have a safe place for them. Appreciate you coming out um, and being with us. So, before I introduce uh, Dana and Tanti, they, um, we were needing a summer series. And usually we try and say, okay, two years ago, we said, how do we have it a theme? And so this year's theme was, how do we come on the other side of being together um, after uh, these unusual things that happened in our personal lives, from our health to job and so forth. And sometimes you wonder whether or not you do have all the the three streams, right? The three chords. We wonder whether or not we actually have them and where are they and how can we find them in each other? And so Dana reached out to me and she shared that her and Tanti had created this devotional book. And it's 40 exhortations from our hearts, from our hearts to yours. And I said, well, Dana, you know what? We will have 40 days. <laughs> we have three days during the summer. And I want you to put all that goodness inside of three days and have your book available and find out how you can possibly add some additional Bible study for us to be together. You know, we're just now getting back in churches most of the time. And how do we fellowship just not on Zoom or over the phone, but in person that we can love and, and, and love and support one another. So I am truly excited to hear from Dana and Tanti as they guide us through a three-part series of We Got This Sis. So June 8th, we are starting with a door. Can I say a door? A door. I adore you. You know, we would hear that all the time. See, my grandmother used to say that to me. I adore you. And I'm like, well, that's kind of corny. And then I realized what it really meant is the adoration that she had for me. What she saw in same see for myself. And that adoring love that she provided to me was her display of how Christ loved her. So without further ado, I would love to introduce to you our summer series speakers, Tansy and Dana. Right. Just, no. <laughs> no, thank you so much. I'm sorry. Don't know, right? I feel like we don't need this, but does it help? If we well, have it will help us with Zoom for Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, for Zoom. So I will be obedient and clean up the Zoom. Testing, testing. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Andrea, for that awesome um, introduction. And I've been a part, I feel like I'm home, so mm -hmm. I don't feel like a stranger. I've been part of the Fellowship of Professional Women now for almost two years, and then COVID happened, like everyone else who had our break. But we are glad to be here. We don't take it lightly. Uh, <coughs> you all are here today to uh, hear what we believe God has placed on us and through us to share with as many people who will listen all over. And so thank you for having us. What you can expect over the next three months is real life discussion and dialogue amongst all of us. We're not just here to lecture, but we are here to grow together. 
so that we can have some transformation happening, happening using Jesus's teaching principles as our guide, not Thane and TNT, but through our Lord Jesus. And so we are humbled and blessed to be used by him on this day to be here with you all. So thank you very much for welcoming us and having us. Yes, and I echo that. So thank you so much. We're very grateful to be here and to share our story. So to get us started, wanted to tell you a little bit about how we got this sis got here, right? So the inception of We Got This Sis began with me having some uh, challenges at work. You guys probably know this, but um, competition tends to bring out the things in, in people, but especially women, right? That's unfortunate to say, but it's so true. So um, during, when I have challenges like this, I try to immerse myself in the word. I look for positive readings and I was having some problems finding something to relate to. So with that, after I got through and I conquered, I was more than a conqueror over that um, issue at work. But after I got through that, I thought, why not share my experiences with other people? I mean, if I'm going through it, somebody else is probably going through it too. So I'll just put together some, some thoughts into writing. And then I thought, with the issues I was having at my job, it was more with women, women not supporting other women, women not knowing how to uh, navigate through um, challenges of, of competition, you know, feeling unworthy, not confident, not knowing how to relate to other women during these types of times. It would be great to write a book with a girlfriend. What better way to show unity of women than to uh, partner up with someone? So my beautiful sister, Dana, came to mind. Um, Dana, if you just don't know her well, she's a beautiful soul. She um, is a great counselor, and she does that through um, God's word. She always says, God's word is the authority, so let's check with him and, and see what we come up with. So love that about her. She's also very transparent and supportive. So she decided, yes, she would partner with me on this book. And um, I think that has been very cathartic for both of us to write this book. But more importantly, I believe that it's, it's helping other women. And uh, that was our basic mission. Of course, we wanted to make sure that we were sharing our story, but we wanted to share it in a way that would be relatable and impactful to other women. So when, when Tanti asked, I was initially thrilled. <laughs> and I was initially thrilled because, um, in, in short, I won't go through too much, but I had had a very tumultuous uh, childhood. I. You know, grew up from California, California, single mother. Um, you know, a lot of the statistics that you heard. I'm with a single mother. I was with a single mother. Oh, I, I, did, I say, I, did I say I'm sorry? I'm just making sure. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't mean that. No, I grew up with a single mother. She was a single mother, not me. That's right. Yeah. And um, was married by 22, still with my husband today, but I have three kids by 26. I had been molested. I had been um, raped in the park by two men. So it was all the reasons that I couldn't have survived. But Fast forward, God came into my life and he did his thing. I got a relationship with him. I got to know this um, man that we call our savior, gave my life to him and just seeing him do some things in the work of my life personally and with my family. And again, I, I'm prayerfully happy to say that I've been um, with my childhood sweetheart for over 35 years. And so God did his thing. Yay, that. But that said, Tanti and I's relationship started with some challenges. Um, you'll have to read the book to kind of hear a little bit more specifically. We had some challenges, the challenges that come uh, with mistrust um, that women sometimes have, uh, lack of communication that sometimes can occur, and then just some history and some unforgiveness and broken relationships. And so with that, I had to go back and forth in should I do this book with her? And so I had to ask God. It was a matter of man pleasing versus God pleasing. What better opportunity for him to use the history of our relationship to be an example to other women and um, show how we can heal individually and heal collectively and then ultimately be used 
in the kingdom of God. And so I obeyed the calling that she had physically <laughs> and he had spiritually to co-author this book with her. And ultimately it has been a blessing to know that God can use your mess for message uh, in terms of helping other women uh, heal and then hopefully be whole so that they can be the women, the entrepreneurs, the sisters that they are called to be for God's kingdom. Amen. So, yeah, that. And to further our mission, we got this. I don't know how to follow that. One, but we, 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 as women, we are um, we are natural change agents, right? Um, we have the natural ability to um, lean into problems. We have the natural ability to, um, you know, sense when there's a need. And when we lean into problems, we're not there just to figure out results quickly. We're leaning into for understanding, right? And when we understand, we can then create a path to transformation. So it doesn't matter if you're this, you know, hoity-toity executive. It doesn't matter if you are a mother who understands the weight of shaping a child. We all have impact. And as natural caregivers and nurturers, we understand the importance of having very positive impact. So with that said, um, we got this sis wanted to be more of a, um, um, you know, a, 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 what do you call it? A ground stabilizer, I would say, for women to be able to help, um, healthily, what I mean by that is mentally healthy, uh, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, be able to support one another, right? To be able to be there for one another. So we collectively could go out and make a difference. So that's what We Got the Sis is about. And we believe that the synergy with testimony and God's word um, is a perfect combination for inspiration and for bringing uh, women closer to, to Christ. Yes, so here we are. Here we are today. And we are uh, tasked with the mission today and over the next three months to help support the mission of the Fellowship Professional Women. And to our again, because I'm part of the family and she's gonna be part of the family too, right. is to, with Jesus's teachings, help support each other in our faith personally, as well as in the marketplace. That's mm -hmm. our mission, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have done that even in our book by um, addressing three strategies in doing so. One is adoring. And we'll talk more in depth about that, but during which Andrea talked about that. The second is thriving, which will be next month. We'll go more deeper into what that means. And then the last is lifting, which is kind of synonymous with iron, sharp, and iron. So we'll go more deep. That'll be our last kind of our celebration. How do we go back and lift others up? But today we are going to focus on adoration. And what that means is in order for us to be who God has called us to be, which is a conduit to the world, we have to not only love ourselves, adore ourselves, <coughs> not in a, 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 the worldly way of love, but in God's way, right? And he gives us a specific way of doing that in 1 Corinthians 13. He breaks it down what love is, being kind to ourselves, not being so harsh or so, not being um, unforgiving to ourselves. And we'll get deeper into that later. But learning to love ourselves, and I love what Joyce Meyer says, we can't give what we don't have. So if we don't love ourselves, how can we love others? And so that's the second part of that, is just really understanding, are we properly and correctly loving ourselves so that we can love others? And so you all thought you were, but you know, I, I was trying to be tiny, trying to <laughs> eat your food, but you guys thought, you possibly were just going to come here from Tanti and I, but we really want this to be the interactive discussion that um, we think could help us all get involved in just hearing from um, all of us in, in our hearts. And so part of that is just as we kick this off, talking about what it means to show love mm -hmm. to others and 
desire to be shown love to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I know this is an intimate group and that's okay. This is even better because we can have some real dial. I mean, mm -hmm. Not that we couldn't do it with a big group. We could be a hundred, we could still do it. <laughs> but we can really get intimate in, with each other and, and talk amongst ourselves. But I would like for you to identify someone in the room it could take about 10 seconds who so you don't normally talk to as much. To be honest, this is just between you, me, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I want you to go to them and I want you to have that five minute discussion on what you believe it should feel like to be showing love to one person and then how you would like to receive. This is not about what you think, what you I want you to talk about your personal. So I'd love to start off with this question, okay. and if anybody could just share, that would be wonderful. Um, the question is, did you hear anything from the person that you were talking to that maybe made you look at love differently? Please share. Please chime anything in. different? Yes, okay. please chime in. Yes. I was blessed. Do I say do we say ours or do we say whatever you here, have just out of it, whatever you do, it. Yeah. 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 No, no certain okay. order. Yeah. All right. Well, for me, I, I said and I told my my new sister here, Nancy, was um, I told her that to show uh, love was to serve and to serve with that kind, giving, loving heart. And but ways that I need to receive is I need to have someone say, I got you with that mm. strong emotional stability, that emotional intelligence yeah. to say, you're giving too much, stand back, I got you. Yeah. And for Nancy, where it was just so powerful, she said her way of showing is to show up. Mm. It didn't matter what it was. It could just be her Ricola or whatever something, not even to say anything. It was just to show up. And for her to hear her heart beyond the surface and that's where we talked about the eyes where you look into someone's eyes and that tells you going into their soul because you never know what a smile is going to do and you never know how you're going to impact their day and their life by just really doing something of a kind gesture and that was really powerful hear her heart beyond the surface I love that. That was awesome. I love that. And just, just check that part beyond the surface. I mean, when we don't feel comfortable, when we don't, you know, I, I can go and I know we're short on time, but just even back it up when I told you to get up and go to somebody you didn't know. If we were to really be honest, you can stop there and just talk about the feelings that we sometimes feel when we were having to get out of our comfort zone. But now that I'm out of my comfort zone, there's something, and there's a whole five uh, love languages that we need to talk about. I think Gary's body like, goes further to that. Here's what Nancy needs beyond the surface, and here's what I need. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else that would like to comment? Can I see a hand? Oh. <laughs> I'll comment. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I well, what we really talked about was through your actions. That person, whoever that person is that you love, they should know you love them. Just by the way, treat them. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you were so to that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but she told me a great story about her grandfather uh, and how he showed love. You want to share some of that? Here you go, right? It was great. <laughs> yes. My grandfather was so sweet, and I didn't get to see him very often, but he exuded love. I wanted to be around him every second I'd hang on him. Mm -hmm. I just, he was just, they just showing, just exuded love, and it was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just that they just know you love them. You don't even have to say it. And that reminds me of a scripture that I wrote down and brought with me, and that is John 13 and 34. Says, I give you a new commandment to love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. <laughs> Everyone will know by this, you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. If you love one another, he didn't say they will know by the clothes that you wear or the badge that you put on yourself or you running around saying, I am Jesus' disciple. It says by your actions. And that was beautiful. Your grandfather, you wanted to be around all the time because you knew he showed you love, and it was through his actions. 
And that's what we um, we have to do when we're showing love to one another. Um, it's easier, I think, to show love to our family, right? Mm-hmm. Even when they get on our nerves and they do something crazy, uh, we can forgive them. We'll go back and give them a hug. But what about um, love to your neighbor, mm-hmm. to your community? How do you show that love with action? So I just wanted to throw this out there because I think that, um, is it Michelle? Mm-hmm. Okay, Michelle mentioned this a little bit. There is uh, four different types of love, and I think the love that you guys were talking about was the agape love, it's the unconditional God love. There's also eros, which is romantic love that you have with your spouse. There's phileo, which is a friend love, a friend bond. And then there's also storage, which is empathy of a family member, um, a mother to child love, a sister to brother love. So I think that it, it could be easier with the eros love, it's easy with the storage love, with the phileo love even, but how do we show um, agape love? Mm-hmm. Does anybody else have a comment? Something you just want to share? It's hard not to be a marketer and take that cue to speak. So. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we talked a little bit about the Love Languages book and how I have teenagers. So as they get into their founding relationships, both with friends and with potential dates of the future as a mama, it is scary. Mm-hmm. And so we talked a little bit about looking for the person who anticipates your needs. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be overtly romantic. It could be, I was showing them an example. My husband is not a super romantic guy. He's never going to say, I've got a sitter and tickets to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, I come home from, from a long, from a long event, and he has scrubbed the shower floor. And that is beautiful. Oh, so, um, so I use this as an example to my kids that love is not jealous or possessive. It doesn't say you're mine. Mm. It allows for independence and a pursuit of happiness and acceptance. And so it's the little things. Folding laundry can be just as meaningful when you know you're um, loving somebody through service, through time given, through something that may not even be your skill set, but you're willing to contribute. So I, I see him through that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. That's good. That's good. Well, like Tansy says, you know, it's important to at least first understand ourselves and where we are. That's part of just really being honest with the Lord and honest with the Holy Spirit. Here's where I'm at, Lord. Here's my needs. And here is, you know, this person's needs. But am I even answering those needs? Do I, you know, you may know someone who sounds similar. I know Michelle talked about Nancy. You may know a friend who's like that. Or, you know, and sometimes you don't know until you ask. But now that you know, am I serving and showing myself? Um, as this person needs it. But more so, as Tansy said, Ms. Rowe was going, what is God's authority? And Matthew 22 in 37 and 39 says that one, he says, he's given us two great commandments. I think it's important to understand. I stop and pause sometimes just to really just let that meditate in my heart. Commandments. That means we don't have a choice, as he said his daughters and we are his sons. We don't have another option. And one of those commandments is to first love him and he talks about it in the older testaments on what it means to love and you love him sometimes just by obeying him yes. by spending time with him relationship more than religion spending time getting to know him listening to the spirit knowing the word is important but also just spending time with the spirit but then it doesn't stop there it's that second part that gets you <laughs> you know just i'll be honest you know the second part love yourself like or love your neighbor like you love yourself. Not just love your neighbor, love, love your neighbor like you love yourself. And if we have somewhat of a healthy relationship with ourselves, I know sometimes we're harder on ourselves, we need to lose weight and all that. But for the most part, we're going to preserve our safety. We're not going to go intentionally put ourselves in harm's way. We want people to forgive us when we have done wrong to them. Mm-hmm. We want people to understand when we don't always meet their marks mm-hmm. and, and do the things that 
we uh, they sometimes expect from us, whether it's our family, whether, whether it's our spouse, or whether it's our coworker, our business, our customers, we want grace sometimes. So the question I have, and the question that Tansy was asking is to reflect a little bit, stop. And when we think of neighbor, it can be your next door neighbor technically. But when I looked up the word neighbor, neighbor also mm -hmm. means just sitting across the room, just mm -hmm. in proximity. How I, I'm here month after month. Mm -hmm. Tanti said something to me that I just it convicted me on the spot. She said, You've been here, come here a year and a half. You didn't know Myrna? I said, No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just gonna keep it 100. I don't know Myrna. I didn't <laughs> and I she didn't mean to do that, but it was my own conviction wow. because I said okay, no, I've been coming here, but I haven't taken the time to know Myrna. But I think this is a good time to go to um, the next part. And this, and it's not correlated to me not knowing Myrna, but if you pull your phones out real quick, hopefully you guys have a good data plan. <laughs> uh, and um, go to that QR code that's on your table. Two, on, two per table. And yeah, so you don't have to share it. And there's a question that should pop up Oh, okay. So just turn off your camera and just hold it over the QR code. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, this is anonymous, so no one will know. No one will be identified. If there's no, we don't have an IP tracking or anything like that. <laughs> but if you see that, everyone see. Now I don't see it. Says, it. Oh, it does. I'm sorry. I see. I thought it says it on my mind that I started. Okay. How about now? Should we refresh? Oh, yeah, there, there it is. is. There it is. Okay, there we could do grease. So, if you would just answer that, I'll give you about 15 seconds to answer that. And then I got one more oh, question. That's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Sometimes, yes, sometimes, sometimes in the middle, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Give you a little bit of that. So there was a question that I had, and I apologize to the audience for not thinking through that technology. <laughs> but the question is, do you believe it is hard to love people you don't understand? Yes, no, or sometimes? And that's the question. Okay. We're going to fast forward to the next question. Okay, can everybody see it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, the second question is, which reason or reasons do you believe can be barriers to how we love? And you can make multiple selections. So one is religious beliefs, two, and it's not in any particular order, education, parental influence, societal influence, personal experiences, Political beliefs, and there could be some things, some others that I have so not. We don't, so we don't have the, all of the above, but <laughs> you don't have <laughs> all, all, all of the above. But, but, all of but, but all of you can honest, select them all, it. and again, we these are anonymous, so no one will know what you put. But we are going to disclose it. <laughs> That's okay. I don't you know. Mind. Mind. I'm a real. <laughs> and then the very last question. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, did I go oh, to that? It's currently closed. Okay, I did. Okay. This is cool the way this, this works. This is cool. Listen, really cool. all right, just really give cool. God the glory because it's my first time using it. Like, it's <laughs> okay. So, the last question What are some ways I do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. What are some ways I can be more like Christ? And you can make multiple selections. Again. Know all of the above. Know all of the above. But for you at home, I have renew my mind, open my heart, being more proactive in my actions, studying the Bible more, praying more, and forgiving more, or forgiving others. And there, there may need to be all, all of the above, but you can press more than one. Okay. And I'll give a yeah, I'll give a second. 30 more seconds here. Went last time too fast. Yeah. Okay, we're good. So let's just talk about the second time we won't get too in depth here, but let's just see where we are as women. And hopefully everyone was um able to think through it a little bit to see. And I'll have to share them since I don't have a PowerPoint with you, what we came up with as a group. So do you believe it is hard 
to love people you don't understand. 84%, 84.6% of us said, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. 7.7% said no. And then 7.7% said sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think what we're just going to, and I hope you guys heard that at home. I think we're just going to pause and say, just even there. Well, actually, no, we can, this is a good point to just go to the next one. Let's just see what you guys said all together. <laughs> okay. Which reasons do you believe can be barriers to how we love? And here's, okay. Oh, crap. Fast. Okay. Sorry about this. Technology sometimes is your friend. Sometimes it's not. Okay. 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 Mysterious. I don't know if it's okay. We'll try it one more time. It's just going slow here. Okay. Which reasons do you believe can be barriers to how we love? 22%, 22.2 said political beliefs. 19.4% said religious beliefs. 16.7 said personal experiences. 16.7% says societal influence, very diverse answers. 11.1% said parental influence. 11.1% said education. And then 2.8% other. Wow, that was like all yeah. over the spectrum. But well, again, we can't, we don't have time. Yeah. What's that? Interesting that political is first. Yeah, yeah. And, but, and, and that was 22. Yeah, that was the highest. Mm-hmm. That was the highest, 22%. But then the next one was religious beliefs. I can really say they're tasting those. I can just go there a long, long time, you know, even down to the uh, religious beliefs. They were arguing before, you know, back in right. New, New Testament and Ephesians, right? Yeah. That's his division of the churches, right? And so this is nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. Political beliefs, they was arguing that back in the Old Testament, right? They were, we want a king, we don't want a king. <laughs> you know, they were going back, so nothing so when God tells us to love our neighbors like himself, he is already aware of all the barriers that we could potentially have. So what are your thoughts? Do we have the right to say, well, God, but you don't understand. <laughs> they think differently than I do. They don't have the same political views. No, it is still a command that we have as believers. I want to share this, and I'm going to give Tanti an opportunity to uh, share something with you as well. You know, I have it here. I wrote an exhortation in the book, uh, We Got This, it's called Love Matters. And I wrote it um, at a time when the pandemic had just, we didn't publish the book until about uh, four months into the pandemic, or actually a little bit later. It was, it was much later. But I wrote it at a time that we were all at home and had no other choice but to uh, Zoom. And so I was listening to a uh, pastor who had started an initiative called the Unity Table. And it was awesome. It was a collection of over 100 pastors. Were you part of that? It's your church. Awesome. Well, it was 100 pastors of all different religious beliefs, political for the men of like sweat come together to have a hard conversation. And you know, like reality TV, you could be home and listen. I was listening in closely, you know, to the answers and what are you going to say? Because as a Christian woman, I have always thought that God, for you to truly be God, we all got to come together. Black, white, economics, poor, rich, you know, how is this, how are you going to do this, you know? And, and sometimes looking at the church, I oftentimes go, why aren't we the solution as the church, as a whole to the world? And so it just gave me great pleasure to um, see this. But interestingly enough, I had just been tasked, and, and I'll read this one of uh, this, I'm not going to read this whole exhortation, but this one part that I just, God had put on me. One of the Bible's most sobering passages tells us that 
if we speak the end of angels but don't have love, we have become sounding brass or a clanging symbol. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Simply put, we are nothing but noise mm. if we do not love. That's how he says that. We can be accomplished. We can accumulate an abundance of material things. We can even have a cure for cancer. But our creator tells us that nothing matters if love does not matter. Love certainly does not mean that we will agree on everything, but it does mean that we must learn to that is peaceful and harmonious. It also means that we must make a concerted effort to express love towards those who do not think like we think or act like we act. In fact, the book continues in Luke to say, if you love those who only love you, what benefit is that to you? Luke 6.32. For even sinners love those who love them. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in short, God is basically saying it's easy, easier to be with those who we're familiar with. It doesn't just mean race. It doesn't just mean women to women. It's <coughs> all type of, it is geographic, right? If we were joking with Myrna, just in terms of, I'm a California, I'm a city girl still, you know, <laughs> versus, you know, I'm here in the South with the Bible Belt, you know, just that thinking alone, we're, we're different. And it's easy to love people who think like us and are like us, but the Lord commands us to be different. So personally, my, my neighbor had asked me during this time when I was watching the community table, I had just moved in this neighborhood about a year and a half. And she said, did I want to go on a walk? It was random. She had just asked me that I want to go on the walk. And at that time, I was thinking, the first thing I thought was, dang, if I go on a, mask, on a, on a, a walk with her, do I wear my mask? Do I not wear my mask? <laughs> and if I wear my mask or if I don't wear my mask, Will she think I'm a Republican or will she think I'm a Democrat? I will. I will. And it's like, it's all that It's all that And I said, and she thinks that, will she think, you know, that sometimes I'm flexible, I'm not all right, or I'm not all left, or whatever I am. And it was all this before I even said yes to going on in my mind, which is what he. The enemy often does yes, 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 on why yes. we don't go approach this person because all of these preconceived yes. notions that we have in our minds. From the devil. Yes. Right. And we and we don't. Well, for the record, I did go on this walk <laughs> and I did wear my mask. <laughs> and yes, and we still we did walk a few more times. But if I were to honest be honest with myself, I just thought about how that same behavior goes with us in my add on experiences, mm -hmm. age, and some of the other things that we have mm -hmm. on that. You're, you know, I know for myself, this is why I don't do that. That's why I don't take the time. This and that and this. But we have a commandment. Mm -hmm. So as we close, yeah, we think, have just a few minutes. So if you don't mind going yes. to that very last question, we can yes. close it out possibly yes. with that, the answers to the last question, which is basically, what are some of the ways that you could be more like Christ, right? And yes. we gave you some multiple choices here. Pray more was 20%. Mm -hmm. Studying the Bible more, 18%. Renew your mind, 18%. You can we disperse all of this. Having a more open heart, 15%. Forgiving others, 15%. And then being more proactive in my actions, 13%. Mm -hmm. That's even, basically, I would say across the board. Yes. So I would say there is a number, there's a multitude of ways that we could work on being um, more like Christ. And that's something that we want to leave you with. Um, you know what you chose, right? We don't know. It's all anonymous. But we ask that you think on that and maybe try to improve it before our next session. Also, if you wouldn't mind looking at your table as we close, we have left next to a pen the um, an a acronym. Practical tool. Yep, a practical <laughs> tool for a door. Um, in each of the letters, basically spell out something that would help you show love, right? So, and that is, you want to read it out? That's yes, so A, as we, until we meet again, yeah. based on what we have discussed today, based on what we understand about ourselves and love, based on what we say we can do to be better Christian women and daughters of Christ, we are saying to be A, more actionable mm -hmm. before we meet again. D, deliberate. Just think about the exercise and getting up and going across the room and meeting someone you didn't know. That was deliberate. Oh, open-hearted. 
it's possible we may never agree. If you're married, you already know how that game goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna agree on everything. But open hearted. And even after we open hearted, we always wanna be our respectful. We may never get to agreement on some things, but that doesn't mean we can't be respectful to one another. And what I'm gonna stop there and always say this, Tanty and I had this discussion, Sometimes the Holy Spirit will reveal things that we don't know yet or don't understand fully yet. Let him be the master and the master judge in things that we don't get. So be respectful. But more than anything, as we do that, know that you give life and empower others. It's important to uh, give love and, and receive love back. And so that's what we want to leave you with. We know we've kind of maximized our time, so we don't have time for Q&A, but we just want to say be blessed until we meet again next month, where we will talk about thriving. And thriving is all about when we love ourselves correctly, how God allows us to prosper in various areas of our lives. And I don't just mean money in our mind and our soul and our health, so we'll have more dialogue. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Because we are supposed to be 90 minutes. I would not have turned that off. <laughs> and I want to respect all of our times, but I'm going to tell you something. I almost started crying with Charlotte from the moment you started the dialogue of my notes. And I got to buy a book because I've already written it. Mine. <laughs> and they have books for sale right across in the back, right? How much are the books? $15. Get your book because I've already got notes. So technically, I bought <laughs> but this is what you say on my little piece of paper because I got a bunch of notes challenging and competition God is the authority and you reveal that in your relationship as women that you mistrusted one another that there was some unforgiveness there and you loved God first God loved you more to forgive one another and that display in and of itself is what women need and i want to thank you for just revealing those pieces to us but how many people are full okay oh, Amen. next thing we're going to do is you're going to bring a friend next month <laughs> and we're going to see if we can take that tally of what you just did and perhaps post it on social media so we can get a real good feel about how do we really do respond to some of these questions? I thought that they were fantastic questions, don't you guys? Oh, yes. And so for those of us who are joining us on Zoom, we want to hear from you. You can participate. So we're going to see how we can work through that and send out the poll again, perhaps. The interactive part. We sat there for a minute, didn't we? Like, are we supposed to get up? <laughs> thank you for adding that interactive piece. And so I am looking forward to next month, and I hope that you guys are too, because a door means everybody got your door card out. Yes. A, actionable, deliberate, open hearted, respectful, and empowering. And you said one of my favorite sayings that I say to people I give life, I'm not to take life. Yes. And God is life. And we just thank you, ladies, so very much. Can we just give it up for Dana? After our meeting, for those of you who are online, we'll let you know how to purchase their book. But we got this, sis, and I can't wait to start reading it again because I already started taking notes. I kind of went up, took it on myself. So <laughs> they are available to you guys. Next month, we are on Thrive, July 13th. Please show up and bring a friend because this, my friend, was very valuable. I have yes. certainly taken some nuggets. And then, of course, we will do part three in August, which is Lyft. And again, bring a friend, join us online. You'll get the registration um, after today's event that you can register for next month in July. And with that, you guys, if you have your parking tickets, if you're in person, please make sure they can see Liz. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And due to time next month, we will fold in an amazing sponsorship opportunity with Christine. But please know that we are looking forward to you guys renewing.